All right, let's talk about some momentum. We're going to determine an object's momentum and describe the factors that affect it. So without further ado, let's say somebody wants to play catch, which is going to be easier to catch. Someone tosses you an apple, someone tosses you a giant watermelon. Now you have some instincts about this already. You may be leaning toward, hey, Mr. J, it's a whole lot easier to catch that apple than that watermelon. This is a tiny little mass, and this is a huge amount of mass obviously okay all right that makes sense so far so good let's say okay let's go with the apple idea let's say somebody tosses you that apple nice and neat Ooh, you caught it nice because that's tiny little mass but then someone else takes it and just whips it at you super fast right which of these is going to be easier to catch obviously mr j you know, i want the one that's tossed to me that's nice and easy that's easy to catch okay so we have two factors that we're dealing with here the mass, how much stuff, the actual measure of inertia, how hard it is to stop. Watermelon had a whole lot, the apple had a little. And the velocity, the lobbed apple, nice and neat, had a little bit of velocity, but the one that got whipped at your face super fast, that, a whole, that had a whole lot of velocity. Okay, so we need to take both of these things into account. We need a way to deal with both mass and velocity at the same time. How are we going to do this, you ask? With momentum. That's going to take into account both mass and velocity. Now, we already have the word momentum in the English language. You've probably already heard it. You've already used it. Sports teams have momentum when they're on winning streaks. Um, somebody has momentum when they're just something that's continuing to happen or continuing uh, um, to win or do something like that. If it's continuing to happen, it has momentum. We say that. Um, you may have already heard about inertia when, when we talked about Newton's first law, something that's in motion stays in motion, at rest, stay at rest, that kind of stuff. Um, well, this is, momentum is kind of like inertia in motion. It's moving mass, which makes sense. We're dealing with mass and velocity. So we're just literally going to multiply them, mass times velocity. So if we had a five kilogram um, watermelon that we were dealing with, let's say we threw it at three meters per second, then we're just going to multiply those together and we get 15 kilogram meters per second. There's no fancy new unit for momentum. It doesn't get its own. Poor momentum has to deal with whatever it's given. Kilograms, meters per second. So when we're writing this algebraically, all right, okay, so mass, m, that makes sense. Uh, velocity, v, that makes sense. Momentum, p, that obviously... No, no, that, that doesn't really make sense. Well, okay, well, there's some language stuff here to deal with. Um, in Germany, they call it der Impuls. In French, it's l'impulsion. The Latin is pateri, and there's, which means to go and seek. Um, so that type of that motion, that movement. And there's uh, arguments as to how this evolved when they first started dealing with momentum. And actually, when Newton first started dealing with this, he didn't even use the term momentum um, at the time. So later on, they had to deal with something. And let's see, M is already taken because that's mass. Um, impulse, the Germans and the French, well, that gets confusing because inertia is a thing and moment, the moment of inertia is a different thing. So they didn't use that. So they ended up going with P instead. So p is our variable for momentum uh, but more importantly it's measured in kilogram meters per second um, or basically whatever mass and whatever velocity you're given so kilogram meters per second or kilogram kilometers per hour or pound feet per second as long as it's a mass times a velocity you're good to go so i'm going to leave you with a question that we're going to talk about next time why would the iss be concerned about tiny little pebbles if momentum is mass times velocity, and that mass is so itty bitty for that tiny little pebble, why is the International Space Station very concerned about those tiny little pebbles? I'll leave you with that, and I'll talk to you in the next video.